Hi, I'm Matt Russell. I'm the senior lecturer for the technical services route. Uh, today we're in the electric theatre. This is a fortnightly event that we do where we have the students in the morning setting up the equipment and then throughout the day we have bands playing, special guests giving lectures. Uh, and yeah, so we have this weekly show here at the Electric Theatre, which is a massive bonus for the technical services route, which means that we have this glorious facility at our disposal all the time. Uh, so what we're doing at the moment is clearly setting up the stage. We've done a few things uh, odd this week. We've uh, decided to do something slightly different over here than we normally do. The first thing that we do when we look at the uh, setup is try and work out where everything's going to go. Obviously we do that normally from stage plots but uh, this is a little bit more fluid than that because we've got different bands on so as we set up the equipment it's very similar week after week in different positions. We try different things out. One thing that we've sorted out already because uh, it's quite early in the morning you might be able to tell from my uh, baggy eyes is that we've been dropping power to the various places where we need power, that's one thing that we needed to sort out. Uh, we've been putting staging in the right place, the stage has to be in the right place because we've got a projector that's going to be coming down. Later on we shall be focusing some of the lights onto the various elements on the stage. Obviously we're positioning monitors and sound equipment in the correct places and later on I'll show you where the sound desk goes. Um, a lot of this stuff is obviously a bit of a compromise. You can't have the perfect show, you've, got to, you've just got to deal with what you've got. Uh, so you may want more, more space on the stage or more, more performance space, but if the space is a certain size you've got to just go with that. This venue is slightly further up the touring chain, let's say, than say your normal pub venue. A pub venue has a fairly static stage and you normally have very generic bat line and bat line positioning. Once you get up to a theatre size venue, uh, then you have a lot more production choices, um, which means that you can start thinking about scenery, you can start thinking about backdrops, you can start thinking about AV things, you can start thinking about lighting effects, you can start thinking uh, much more as a production manager style thing and thinking of the things that you can make the show look uh, more credible as a show. Whereas when you play a pub or the toilet venues around as a small band, you don't get the opportunity. So it's a great opportunity for the students on the musician pathway to play in front of, say, 200 people, uh, which they wouldn't normally get. And it's a great one for our guys because they get to set up stages uh, at a level that they probably wouldn't have access to. And it's great for the creative artists because they can come in and sing their songs in front of a large cohort. And it's great for the business students because because they have special guests that come down and talk about the music industry as well at these events. One of the issues that we always have is that everyone, all the people that we're dealing with, uh, are, don't have much experience on, on working at a stage of this kind of size. So all the musicians, when they come, they're not used to doing very, very tight sound checks. They're not used to uh, where they're supposed to be standing or, or what, the, what the rules of the game are, what the, uh, you know, the rules of engagement are. So it, it's, that's one of the challenges, is to keep, the, to keep the, the load in time and the show running on time because everyone's not really up to the standard that you'd expect of a theatre show. Normally with a touring act, they've got their they've got their act together and they've got a tour manager, they've got backline techs, they've got production managers, they've got stage managers and, and they're keeping the whole thing going. Here everyone's learning how to do these jobs and so it, that is the, one of the challenges and it's a great challenge because there's nothing better than learning while you're in the deep end. So this is the patching. Patching is actually one of the hardest things to get your head around because you've got several stage boxes uh, labelled up 1 to 16 when they're not really going from 1 to 16 they're actually going from 17 to 32 so um, what we're trying to do is work out the, the best way of cabling up the stage so that you have the least amount of cables running along the actual stage itself because what you don't want is a messy stage so we've got several satellite boxes that plug into the main stage box that we've got over there and it, we're deciding what's the best way to do that and while we're doing that we're creating the channel list here. Channel list then goes up to Jez, Jez then programs the desk to have that channel list so he knows where everything is. Uh, and patching can be a bit of a problem and it, and, it, and it gets even more complicated when you've got a monitor board or you've got 
other systems that you're trying to plug in at the same time. So everyone needs to know what the channel list is so that the recording people know what's on what channel, the monitor guy knows what's on channel, and most importantly, the front of house knows what's on each channel. So I'm setting up the audio console for um, today's electric session. Um, I've just recalled the file from last week's session and now I'm just kind of going through the audio patch making sure that uh, input channels are sent into the correct stereo bus which is then feeding the matrix, uh, matrices to distribute to the PA system. So I've just been PFL using PFL on headphones and just checking the meters and the audio routing is correct. Um, once the system guys have got the PA powered up, then uh, then we voice the PA and put audio through it and um, tap her on the mic and do a line check uh, in preparation to sound check for, for the band. Okay, so bang on time, it's nine o'clock. As we said, Jez has just started to put sound through the PA system, so it's coming through the front of house speakers. What Jez is trying to do is make the songs that he's familiar with sound like he likes to hear them through this PA system. So he's able to voice the PA system in that way. Then he's going to go through each of the wedges and make sure that each of the wedges is labelled up correctly on the desk. And as he goes through, he communicates with the guys down on stage to make, to make sure that the uh, right wedge is coming up in the right place. And once that's sorted out, we know that every wedge is working properly and that they're labelled up correctly on the desk. So when a singer says, I want more vocal in my wedge here, Jez can put that in and it's done. So we're bang on time. We're starting to do those things right now. So just get a piece of gaffer tape and then go, go round like that. And then when Heather comes round, she can write the channel number on there. Three vocals up there into 14, 15, and 16. Okay, so yeah. rather than just moving the, the keys, the well, we're, it, for the keys. Yeah, don't yeah, don't start doing that cross okay, thing so because gonna, it gets really confusing. You're change it on there. Yep, I'll change it on there. So, yeah, it's best not to do that because it gets very confusing. Oh, only if you do it one way or the other. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. So it's on, this, <laughs> on this stage, yeah, let, let me, yeah, saxophone on this side. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Any guitars? Uh, yeah. The channel list is prepped beforehand, but because we're doing things slightly differently this week, uh, we need to juggle it around a little bit. So we all share the channel list. Ideally, a band that are touring, they would have their technical specification that has the channel list on it, uh, and, and that shows 
shows the sound engineer where they have everything and where, where they want everything coming up on the board. And normally that's because they're travelling with the sound engineer and the sound engineer wants really the board to turn... When he turns up to the sound board, he wants it exactly how he wants it because he's normally got a file that he's put together over rehearsals that just goes bonk, bang, and he should be almost good to go straight away with the, with the sound of the band there. So a touring band will have a channel list that they send. We normally send out a channel list amongst us before these shows, but we're just changing it slightly right now. That's what we're doing. Is the vocal good to go there? And the acoustic guitar. Do you want to stand that side or this side? This side. Okay. So if we have your coming through that wedge, we can plug you into that DI. That'd be perfect. So Jez, yeah. I've got borders here, which is the acoustic act. Hello. So we've just sound checked the first band. We've repositioned the stage. We're now going to sound check the final act. We've done it the wrong way around because, of course, uh, they all arrived at the wrong time, which is typical of musicians, but we've got to just do it. So here is the second act. They're now sound checking. So we've repositioned quite a lot of things. Jez is having to do some funny things because we've got, we're using now the compare mics to do some of the lead vocals. So we're sharing channels and things like that, doing soft patches. Uh, so yeah, we're going to run through this band, then we're going to reset for the main act, and then it's showtime. Bass player, saxophone, keyboard player, three vocals. Okay.
Hello, I'm uh, Matt Russell and you have been watching and are still watching the live feed of our workshop, the Technical Services Workshop here in Guildford. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed that uh, little setup that we did of the electric sessions. Um, like I said, uh, if you've got any questions, uh, send them in uh, on the feed and we'll try and answer them in this session. That'd be really good if we can get you all involved in that. Any question, it doesn't matter, uh, but obviously the easier the better because I'm a little bit thick. So uh, here we go. Um, I'm Matt Russell. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of, of a background about me. I've uh, worked in the music industry for about 25 years now. I started off as a musician, obviously, one of those things where you start off as a musician, playing bands. I even played Glastonbury and a few other little things like that. Uh, I then moved on to becoming a live sound engineer. I then moved into a little bit of studio work, then started working as a technical supervisor for a production company uh, called Sensible, and then moved to John Henry's, then moved to Cato, then moved back to John Henry's, and then eventually I found myself working here. So what is the technical services route? The technical services route is, it's got quite a funny name. I mean, it, it really could be called the live production uh, the live production management course. So it's all about live music and how we make live music, how we make it look, how it gets to work. Uh, and it involves things like a bit of sound engineering, tour management, backline tech, and I'll just explain what backline means. Backline is all the things like your drum kits and your guitar amps, all the stuff that's behind that front line of the, of the stage, the back line. So it's the instruments that the bands use. So for example, if you're a back line tech, you might be tuning up a drum kit or getting a guitar tuned, changing the strings, those kind of things. So we, we cover that kind of thing. We also have a look at the look of the show. So we'll have a look at things like the AV, which is the video screens. We'll have a look at the lighting, how, how we actually get it to and from the shows, the logistics. So there's quite a lot that has to happen to make a show work. And one of the things that's very important is live music is about touring as well. So it's how it gets from one place to the other as well. It's a pretty important aspect to it. So that's what we cover, live production. And that is the technical services course. And it, and it all grew out of a need. The course itself grew out of a need for people to work in the live music industry. So the live music industry is the most buoyant area of the music industry at the moment. Lots and lots of people playing live. So it's been uh, a, a growth sector. And so what happened when I was working at one of the production companies, we were putting people on tour. That was our job. Record labels would come to us and say, we need tour managers, we need backline techs. And we would find these people and put them on tour. And we were running out of these people. So I came down to the ACM and said, why don't we write a course together and make the new generation of roadies and techs and they said, what a brilliant idea. So this ran for about eight years and was highly successful. Uh, it got rolled into the degree course. And they asked me, do you want to come down and uh, help out with the degree course? And of course, I said yes, because I'm really enthusiastic about getting people into, the, into this whole live production world, because I, I, I believe in it. And I think that there's definitely a lot of work to be had. I really, really enjoy making it a more professional space and that this is what this course is all about is making people more professional making the entire industry more professional and hopefully when you leave this course you'll be the best of the best uh, so talking of best of the best I have one of my students here <laughs> called uh, called Owen he's a first year student uh, how's it going Owen it's going okay <laughs> I just saw one of the questions pop up there. oh yeah there are some questions oh, coming gone. in this is yeah. this is good but let me ask you a few questions first so how has your first year been we're, we're only a few months in, but has it been so far? It's been good so far, yeah. I found it's been really useful to bring like myself and Claire up to speed because I didn't really know too much about the mu like, music industry, really. I kind of came into it a little bit blind, having done other things before. And then, um, yeah, it's been good. It's kind of laid out the foundations, really. Yeah, and that, that is an important point. We, we've, we've deliberately designed the course so that you can come on and learn it from scratch. So although it's great to have a lot of experience coming into the course, uh, you can get this and learn it from scratch as long as you're committed and, and willing to work hard. I mean, one of the most important things of the live music industry is to be able to work hard, to be nice, actually. No, nobody wants a miserable person or a, or, a, or a <laughs> horrible person on the tour. So we talk about all of those aspects of it. Um, 
what do you actually, what, you know, what is it that you want to get out of the course and where do you see yourself going? Uh, personally, I want to be working in backline by the time I leave, like actually out on the road in the industry, kind of putting my skills to use, what I've learnt here. Yep. And yeah, just I want to be out there doing things. Yeah, I mean, and, the, and the really great thing is that we've had some, we have had some really good successes in precisely that area. We, we had a couple of students, one who left and became the keyboard tech for Rihanna, that was the first job he ever had when he left, <laughs> uh, which is insane, isn't it? And and uh, we, you know, we with people out on tour with Bastille, out on tour with Muse, and all these kind of things. So we've had some really, really ace, brilliant successes on that front. Uh, so yeah, we've 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 got some uh, we've got some pretty good questions coming in. So we have the Soundcraft desk. What other desks do you have in stock, or do you hire other ones in as well? That is a really good question. So we have the Midas M32 desk. Uh, arriving very shortly. Um, the reason why I went out and bought that one is because it's just become so ubiquitous across all the different small venues and that is where you're going to be starting to learn how to do your craft. So the Behringer X32, the Midas M32 are very similar boards, but well they're identically in actual fact to use. So we've got one of those in. We've got the Soundcraft, we've got the Yamaha LS9. The LS9 is a gateway into, into learning how to use digital desks because it it's got the Yamaha software feel to it, so all the CL desks fall straight out of the LS9. So we've got the LS9 as well, the Soundcraft. Um, and yes, we, we, we do do trips to, to companies, local companies in fact, called uh, Digico is, a, is one where we'll have a chance to have a look at their desks. And yes, we, we have had other opportunities to use things like the Avids uh, and have a, uh, have a look at those and how those work. So yes, we, we, get, we have access to quite a few desks in that in that call. I hope that answers your question. You can always type more in if I haven't. <laughs> so how do you handle lengthy, lengthy performances with multiple artist changes? Do people ever have an issue being set up the same way? Well yes, actually I did allude to this in the, um, in, in the actual video earlier, is that no show is perfect and we, if you have that festival vibe Everyone is compromising. No one is having the perfect show. Now, once you become a superstar, then you the, you insist on the perfect show. Hence, someone like ACDC had their own stage at Glastonbury, and uh, because they couldn't share it with anyone else, because it needed to be their production. So, obviously, certain bands get to the point where they can't share the stage with other people. Uh, and also, when bands go on tour, there's the politics of the support band and how far they get pushed in front and, and how much of the production they're allowed to actually take. So there's a, there's a lot of things going on there. But normally, the way that you, that you uh, handle multiple artist changes is to be as organised as possible. And actually, one of the very, very important things is to have a stage manager who's really on it so that if, if things aren't happening, they can shout at people and say, you're not doing that job or this job needs doing now. It's good to have backline techs and sound engineers who respond to that kind of uh, pressure uh, so that the sound engineers are patching away and getting it right and the backline techs are moving equipment around and getting it in the exact positions that it, that, w is it, that it was in in sound check. And of course the sound checks normally run in the reverse order so that you get the opportunity to set the equipment up. And of course at festivals you don't get a sound check, you just rock up and put your gear on stage and hopefully the backline techs of the band know what they're doing and, and get it out. Um, so do we have any do we do we have a lot of mature students on the course? We do have mature students on the course and often the mature students are the ones that that do do very well actually. They they they're ones that understand uh, commitment and they understand timekeeping, but they also understand, you know, they're there because they've chosen that as uh, as a, as a career and they understand it so the mature students can be a real real addition to the course. Uh, and it's great also to have that young energy as well. So we have a real mix of people and, it, and it's really, really great to see. I mean, I have, I've taught people at the ACM who are older than me, which is hard to believe, I know. Uh, right. uh, how much digital desk time would there be on the course? Would there be opportunities to do live setups? Absolutely, I mean, we, we, yes. be, we do quite a lot of live setups and there's plenty of opportunities to do live setups. We have a lot of venues all around Guildford uh, we have venues up in Clapham as well, and it, we're very close to London, so we do have the opportunities for that kind of work. So we're, the opportunities go to our students to work at, say, the Star or the Boiler Room or, or one of those things as a, as a sound engineer or to or to follow a sound engineer. Uh, but yes, we have 
the live desks that can be set up in spaces much like this one and uh, operated on. We have the electric session that runs fortnightly, which gives the students opportunity to either work as the monitor engineer or the front of house engineer. Uh, we've got things like graduation and summer live, winter live, and all the lots of different festivals. And we also have, you know, but one of the great things about the ACM is that it is the music industry in miniature. And I really mean that. It, it, is, it is absolutely our biggest and greatest selling point is that there's loads of musicians, there's loads of producers, there's loads of uh, business people here. And the idea is that you, that you network with these people and say if they have a session in the studio, why not be the backline tech that goes down and help them? Say they've got a gig at the start, well, why not be the backline tech that helps them on that or the sound engineer that helps them on that? And you can also go down to all the live workshops that are every single day here with all the musicians. So you can help the lecturers with the sound there. So there's plenty of opportunity to get on the desk, round equipment. We've got tons and tons of backline and, and audio equipment here. So there is really no excuse to get involved. So it's, it's fantastic for that. Uh, would you agree, Owen? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, there's so many people that just, like, need like managers and the guitarists or bassists, like they just put a thing up on Facebook and saying that they're looking for someone. And there's always someone there to kind yeah. of jump in and take the role. Yeah, absolutely. So I hope that I hope that answers your question on that one. Uh, how diverse is ACM in terms of ethnicity? Well, it's it being close to London, it's it, it is diverse ethnicity. We we have. Uh, obviously, well, we, in fact, we were talking earlier. It's it's quite a female um, yeah. a, a female uh, orient very much a female year, you're, you're, it's about half-half uh, girls and boys. Uh, but yeah, ethnic, ethnicity-wise as well, there's a, there's a real broad mix and, you know, is what you'd expect. I mean, it, there isn't, there's no barrier to entry whatsoever. I mean, it's one of the, it's actually, the, the live music industry has been one of those really good areas where anyone from any background can go into it. And it's one of the fascinating things about being on the road is that you can s be sitting on a tour bus with someone that used to be homeless or, or someone who's been in prison, someone who's just come out and done their PhD and they're all part of the road crew. It's really a very, very diverse place and, and it's, it's one of the things that I absolutely love about it in fact. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. There is, there is no barrier to entry in terms of uh, ethnicity or, uh, or gender. Um, do we get to do live mixing? Well, we, we yeah, absolutely. Uh, with all the events and all the uh, master classes that we do and opportunities are there to do live mixing. One of the great things that I think's happened in the last four or five years, and one of the reasons why I got the uh, Midas M32 is, and, and in fact the Soundcraft does this as well, is that you can do virtual sound checks. So you can go down, record a show, and then keep coming back into one of the spaces and mixing that show as if it was happening there and then. This is a very common thing for live sound engineers to do these days, the virtual sound check. The band play all day in rehearsals, the sound engineer gets to operate the desk and work out where he's going to have all his scenes. The band obviously go home, the sound engineer actually stays in the rehearsal room for another four or five hours going through the set again and again and again. So. Yeah, you get plenty of opportunity to do live mixing and it's absolutely up to you how much work you put into that. And of course, we encourage you to do as much as possible because as a lecturer, I can't, it, if I, it's just like riding a bike. I can't tell you how to ride a bike by just lecturing at you, but I can, <laughs> but, I can but you have to get on the bike and actually cycle it. Um, uh, oh, so we got, we, got, we got a rebound off the, off the question. Thanks for answer to the desk. Do you do much work with industry standard desks, though, such as Digico, Yamaha CLQL, and the Alan Heath? The answer is um, we, don't have, we don't have the Digico in-house, uh, but we do do trips to places like Digico or, and some of the other big um, PA companies. So you will get your hands on those kind of desks at certain points. We don't have them in-house as yet. Um, if, if it calls f to have something like that for a particular lecture, then we would get that item in. We do have uh, close links to the manufacturers, i.e. Yamaha, we do have close links to them. So 
it's something very much, you know, if, if the students are asking, we really want to get our hands on a QL or a CL desk, we just turn around to Yamaha and, or, or one of the distributors and say, do you mind doing, bringing one of your desks in and showing the students and actually uh, doing your course? Because all the desk manufacturers actually come in to various locations and do a day's training on their desk because they want people to learn their desk. So you will have those opportunities. Uh, and it's very much uh, one thing that I will say is that the ACM is student-led. So there's plenty of uh, boards of studies and forums for the students to get involved with. So if that is something that the students really want to do, then that is exactly what I want to do and, and facilitate it. Uh, where does Matt buy his scarves? Actually, there's a funny story about that. I got, I got given a scarf by Sue Kuchko and lost it. And then, uh, and so uh, I had to go and admit that I'd lost the scarf, at which point she gave me some scarves from Lost Property. So they're actually the student scarves that they've lost. <laughs> so, you know, that's, it's actually theft. So my scarves <laughs> are theft, if that helps. Uh, <laughs> what's the intake to the course like? How many people apply versus get onto the course? That is a very good question. Um, at the moment, like I said, there isn't much barrier to entrance. We want to see people come onto the course and most of the people applying to the course actually clearly want to do the course so I'm not going to turn them away. Um, if, they really, if it's something that they really want to do and they have the qualifications to actually get them on the course of course. I mean that is something you can go to admissions about and make sure check that you've got the correct qualifications. We do have a foundation uh, level to this uh, degree so you can either go straight onto the two-year accelerated degree uh, of which you don't, like I said, you don't need too much previous experience, but you do need the qualifications. Um, but you can go on to the foundation level where you need less qualifications and you can sort of dip your toe in the water and make sure that this is the course that is right for you. It's all part of the mi music industry practice degree. So in actual fact, you could get halfway through that foundation year and think, actually, I'd really like to do the production course or, or the business course. And actually, it would give you a gateway into those as well. So the foundation is a really good way of making sure that you uh, acclimatize yourself to student life and, and getting used to academic uh, rigor and things like that. So you can get into university life via the foundation year if you're not confident of getting into straight into this accelerated degree. And bear in mind that it is an accelerated degree, so it's two years. So you do have to work quite hard because it's a year and a half, yeah. <laughs> year and a half stuffed into one year. Uh, so you get exactly the same amount of lecture time as someone on a three-year course, but it's just compressed into two years. So it's, it, it's intense, but that's a good thing because you want to be out touring as quickly as possible to be earning the moolah. <laughs> so that's what it's all about. Uh, uh, and, you know, the great thing about having a degree, at the end of it, you'll learn a whole bunch of skills that only a degree course can give you. The critical thinking, the, the critical analysis, synthesis of ideas, all those things or what a degree course gives you. So I'm, I'm very light about the moolah thing. The great thing about the technical services course is that there are plenty of job opportunities at the end of it, but also think of, think of coming to university as something that is, uh, expands your mind and actually puts you in a much better place to be able to think about the world in a, in a different way. Uh, so hopefully that answers it. I probably went over the top there. Is there a technical services elective add-on for those of us on the musician's route? Uh, there are a couple, yes, there are uh, electives on the technical services course. So, for example, if you wanted to do the tour management uh, module, yes, you can take that as an elective. And that's a really good one. I, I, it's one that I would encourage any of the people on any of the courses to do, because I think the tour management thing is, as musicians, you want to be touring, and it's really good to understand how touring works and where the money is and the promoters and the booking agents and the tour managers and who's nicking your money where and it's really good to understand that so yes you can take tour management there's live recording there's location recording there's hmm, am i missing i think one? there is a tech one as well yeah there's, there's uh, yeah general. there's applied technical services yeah. and, as well as a as an elective so yeah there are there are electives involved but remember the it's this is the the music industry in miniature so there's nothing you've only got a few hours of lectures a week whereas you are on campus with hundreds of musicians hundreds of producers hundreds of singers hundreds of songwriters 
hundreds of other people and it's your opportunity if you want to e if you're a musician but you want to get involved with uh, live sound nothing is stopping you and we've got several students like that who are, are on the musicians course or on the who come in and actually take up some of the opportunities that the technical services students are open to them and vice versa as well if people on the technical services course can do electives in how to play bass as a second instrument and things like that so it there is all those things open to them uh, Matt who have you who have you who have been your favorite clients to work with my favorite uh, I have worked with a lot of a lot of quite famous artists, mainly because of the production places that I worked at. And what's what's funny is it, it's always really scary when you meet your heroes because you're not quite sure whether they're going to be <laughs> nice or horrible. Uh, but I've met, luckily, I've met some absolutely fantastic people in the music industry. And there is the occasional person you think oh, that was a bit disappointing. But on the whole, people are very very lovely, particularly in the live music industry, because uh, it's the only way to get on. Uh, you can be on a tour bus, and remember your job is only one hour of the day, the rest of the day is spending it with people on a tour bus. So you have to have uh, an agreeable personality. So in actual fact, most people are really great to work with, uh, but I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to say one in particular, because, uh, because they're all nice. Uh, I don't want to upset anyone. <laughs> I don't want to upset anyone. Or, or the, you know, uh, the, um, the, there's people that, I, I, I tell you what, Roger Taylor from Queen was, was, was one of those people I, where I thought he's, he's bound to have a massive ego. Turned out, what a lovely, lovely bloke. And we watched football together and what a great guy. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll shout it out to him because he was a childhood hero as well. Um, if the tech services was an elective add-on, how much time would be spent on each of the choices? Um, well, you're supposed to put aside maybe eight hours a week per module for study. So if you choose a tech services style elective, then yeah, you want to be putting in about eight hours work. And that would mean that you would be heading for a first. You know, that kind of commitment does kind of put you in good stead. The amount of work, the great thing about university is that it's a simple equation. The amount of work that you put in will almost absolutely linearly <laughs> uh, result in good re in good results so if you don't put much work in you'll walk out with a lousy lousy degree probably and if you put a load of work in you'll come out with a, a, a great degree so the great thing is to try and find the electives that you will think that you will find interesting and maybe talk to the other students who've done those electives and say was it interesting is this what tell tell me about it because you want to be doing stuff that that floats your boat because if it floats your boat, you're more likely to put effort in. If you're more likely to put effort in, you'll end up with a better degree, and that's and 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 you'll in, you'll have enjoyed yourself, and people around you will have enjoyed you being enthused about the subject. And remember this: this is a, a super important point. That I really want to kind of push home. <laughs> this is the music industry in miniature. It starts here when you when you are here. There will be students who will go on to become world famous uh, musicians and pop stars, and. If you're here and, and you're their sound engineer or you're their backline tech, it's highly likely that your career will go with their career. So the moment you arrive here in Guildford, you will be networking. And, and that's it really. You want to you be here with the best side of yourself out there doing that kind of stuff. How many modules do you do at once? Well, here's, a, here's a question oh. for Owen. How many modules are you doing right at the moment? Right at the moment, including electives? Yeah, yeah. Probably about seven. Seven, so seven modules. Yeah. yeah, so that's. I think that's as much as it will ever go up to, really. Yeah, so it's a lot of work. You know, that's seven. Let's say you were doing six hours of each of those. Yeah. Uh, so seven times six, but it's a two hours of lectures. Some of those will be online electives. Yeah, right. I've got so an online elective view. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, okay. vocational sounds. Yeah, so the online electives um, are probably not as intense because they're uh, just delivered via our virtual learning environment canvas um, and so that you you don't have to turn up to lectures so some of the content you can actually uh, take in when you can slot it in it's a lot more flexible it's a lot more flexible yeah so uh, it's it swings and roundabouts obviously it's much better to have lecture time and one of the things that we do obviously have is a lot of tutorial time we have workshops and boot camps that mean that you get access to people like myself and of, often it, i might not be the person to answer the question 
that someone wants on technical services, they can find one of the other specialists and ask one of the specialists, oh, how do I do this? If, it might be, if it's contract related, you might go to the great Dave Cronin or Patrick uh, and go, oh, help me out with this, and they will help you out with that. Or if it's production related, you might go to the great John Gallen and, and ask him how to do stuff. So it's, there's, there's so, m so many tutors here with, with like centuries of experience. It's really, really great. And it's, it's brilliant for me. I, mean, I wander around and, and, and see if I can brain drain them myself. So it's, it's a good place to be. Um, what, how many are the main modules? Now, if you, g I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refresh myself so I don't go wrong here, but if you go to the ACM uh, website, and I'm going to go there right now. Uh, I'll put a link in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to the ACM website, uh, you, and I'm going to, uh, just so I'm doing it right, if you click on courses, you go to ACM Guildford, in fact, just hover over courses, ACM Guildford, degree, then you get the music industry practice. If you go to the technical services route, it will actually outline the modules that you do. So uh, there's the specific technical services uh, modules, technical stage, and I'm going to whip through these. Technical stage craft is, is, the, is at level five is a mix of live sound and batline tech. Uh, live sound at level four is just like it says on the tin, it's a live sound module, it teaches you the basics of using analog and digital desks, front of house and monitors, and voicing PAs, etc. Audio fundamentals is one that you share with the production route and talks about you know bit rates and frequencies and, and all the things that you need to understand the sonics of live sound. So it ties in with the live sound, but also gives you a little bit of background in music production full stop. And as a live sound engineer now, nowadays, you are expected to do recordings and mix downs as well. So it, it's something that, that is very much true about learning in, uh, in live music now is that you're expected to do hundreds and hundreds of different jobs. So be prepared to sort of learn lots and lots of different skills. Um, got management artist and repertoire, which is all about the, 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 the machine of the music industry, which you need to know. You need to know these things because when you're out on the road, you need to know why the manager is more important than the so-and-so and who the promoter and the booking agent are and how they interact. So you need to know all these uh, music industry things. Got music information technology, so that's how to use things like Pro Tools and Logic. In fact, we, on the technical services route, we try and, and stick to uh, Pro Tools as our sort of uh, door of choice, but actually there's nothing stopping you using things like Reaper or any of the doors, in fact, because there is no, out, out in the real world, it's just use what you can use and use what you can use fast, um, because that's what it's all about. Um, Live event management, obviously that plays into the live event management is one that we share with the business route. So live, event, live events is uh, putting on live events and how you actually uh, organize those kind of things. So it, it, it takes you outside of being a roadie and puts you in the, in the position of the people that are actually uh, booking those kind of events and actually puts you into the mindset of doing other kind of events. As a, someone from the technical services route, you can do things like um, a car show and things like that where there's corporate gigs they're called and they earn a lot of money as well so it's good to have an understanding of the live event industry creative audio technology that was one that what would we try and uh, use the technical skills to augment creative skills from creative artists so something that, that happens a lot on the road is for example an artist will want a certain soundscape behind them and it, come, and it falls down to the technical uh, touring crew to be able to come up with playback rigs or MIDI systems that allow these things to happen. So that's the Creative Audio Technology um, module, which is quite an exciting one. Applied Technical Services is our final level six module, which is all about being able to be a production manager on a show about the size of G Live, which is a sort of 2,000 seater venue. So those, those are the core ones. But if you go through, you'll see that there's other mandatory modules, uh, then the credit bearing ones are your electives, zero credit ones are your electives that, that have no credit but are just there for uh, enrichment, and then you've also got the foundation uh, modules in there as well. Uh, so you can see the kind of things that you'll be working on.
and there's a, a brilliant quote by this clever chap at the bottom there called Matt Russell. No, it's me. <laughs> so there we go. Uh, right, let's go back to my let's go back to my thing and see if there's any more questions. I think. I think that is it. We've had a we've we've uh, we've had quite a few really interesting questions. Thank you very very much. That's been an awesome time. Do you have anything to add to, to any of that? I mean, just oh, just, just so we get the so student point covered. of view. Good. Yeah. <laughs> See, I'd good. say why I run this with an <laughs> iron fist. <laughs> so, <laughs> if you've got any questions for me, uh, feel free to email me at mrussell at acm ac uk. That's mrussell at acm ac uk. Uh, literally, if you've got any questions about the course, I'm, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, if there are questions about the grades and, and, and all the sort of technical side of it, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then send those to the admissions at acm.ac.uk or just contact us via the website. Uh, if you go via the website, you can also book in some open days so that you can come and see us, and you'll almost certainly meet me at those open days. Not that you want to now, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and we've got one. We've got we've got lots of these sessions coming up, and the next one is by a really world class producer called John Gallum, who will be looking into drum recording. Drum recording is very much a skill that we, we that we we have on the technical services thing as well. We, we we want to learn how to tune drums and mic them up properly. So. It's a really good one to watch as, as someone interested in live production as much as a studio one. So John Gallant on the 5th of March, that's definitely worth looking at. So yeah, sign up for an open day and visit our website. Thank you very much for joining us. I've been Matt Russell and this has been Owen. <laughs>